So let's get started. I'm really glad that you've taken the time to join us. Uh, we had a couple of polls uh, scheduled, but uh, because we had to switch webinars, we don't have the polls in there. But it looks like I'm going to do this again tomorrow morning. So if you would, if you want to watch it twice, um, great. Otherwise, oh, you'll get a recording of both this one and the next one. Okay, so I am Marilyn Prince. Um, I was at uh, AccuCorp for many years as a technician, and then I was a COBOL programmer at a small company in Omaha. Uh, and then I came to Variant, and I'm very happy here. Uh, we also have answering questions, Daniel Cardenas and Bernard Zitterman. And um, you, so go ahead and ask your questions as they come to you. If they can answer them, they will. If they uh, if they want, if they think it's of general interest, they'll keep it for the end and I'll answer the questions for everyone. Um, and if I don't get to some questions, I will definitely uh, answer them by email later on. The purpose of this webinar is to introduce you to Variant and the Is Cobol product line. And it's to get you thinking about your Cobol as an asset again and not an encumbrance. So, a uh, little bit of uh, housekeeping. I think you all know about raising your hand. You can see the little hand over there on the right. Um, you can ask questions in the chat area. We're going to be monitoring that. Uh, there are some handouts, and I haven't had a chance to put them into this particular GoToMeeting since it's brand new. Um, I will email them to you, or maybe get out if I can, I'll get them into the um, into the handout area today. There's no need to take notes. One of those handouts will be this PowerPoint. This is the first in a series of six webinars focusing on modernization, both in distributed or open, which is Linux, Unix, Windows, Mac systems, and in mainframe environments. First, we're going to uh, look at some introduction slides, and then I'm going to do a demonstration and take you from a character screen all the way up to a REST service. And then we'll wrap up and answer questions. So Variant is COBOL. It's a COBOL solution that's modern, compatible, it's affordable, and much more. Variant was founded in 2005, and by 2014 had over a million users worldwide. Our main offices are in the US and Italy with direct distri distributors, sorry, with direct distributors all over the world. For instance, Germany, uh, France, Brazil, Spain, Japan, South Korea, Norway, Australia, etc. Um, okay, sorry, I'm trying to, there we go. Our goal is to see all COBOL applications move to a useful, expandable, powerful environment. And to make that move as easy and pain-free as we can, we do that with constant efforts for compatibility with other COBOL dialects. We want you to keep the strengths of COBOL, the mature business logic, and integrate it with the strengths of Java, modern, modular, platform independent, robust, secure. Um, and then we want to give our customers a simple and complete way to take that combined application and put it on the environment best suited to your business, be it the cloud, the mainframe, or distributed system. We think this is the best way to get the most value from your IT investments, to keep the good, add the better, and come up with a vital, worthwhile solution. Variant's unique COBOL to Java framework means that IsCobol technology is suitable to run anywhere. The first environment that we focused on is COBOL off the mainframe, running on Linux, Unix, and Windows. We're a highly compatible alternative to the COBOL compilers of Microfocus, uh, all of their brands, as well as others, and offer a modern perspective with important cost reductions and a full native deployment. So the second uh, area that we are focusing on now is that is COBOL can also run on the IBM Z under ZOS, Linux for Z, and Linux One. And all along, we've, uh, we've partnered with several mainframe modernization specialists and systems integrators to handle COBOL applications when moving off of the IBM mainframes into the LUW or Linux, Unix, Windows systems. 
One example is HTWC with their X-Frame solution powered by IsCobol. Variant IsCobol starts with a strict adherence to the COBOL 85 standard, both the current ANSI X3.23b and legacy dialects. We also include many of the new 2014 ISO standard that promotes machine independence. All development, debugging, and compiling and running happens in a familiar environment. It's still COBOL as far as the COBOL developer is concerned. Java takes care, I'm sorry, Variant takes care of the Java seamlessly and invisibly. But is COBOL also adds to the traditional COBOL environment? We've added a lot of simplified possibilities for web enablement, like a seamless interface to generate a web service, turning legacy COBOL programs into REST or SOAP services. That's what we're going to be looking at a lot in this webinar and upcoming webinars. We also enhance COBOL by offering multiple data storage and access methods. Our COBOL Java connection means interoperability with other languages, including the ability to mix Java and COBOL programs. And the compiled Java classes are platform independent and will run anywhere that Java runs. And finally, our display and accept verbs are enhanced to create a more modern looking UI than the standard COBOL that you've seen before. I wanna stress this COBOL Java connection. Our compiler is a two-part compile, COBOL to Java code, and then Java code to a Java class using the Java compiler. Because our compiler generates Java source code, you can consider is COBOL your path to Java. It's easy to add Java methods to your COBOL, exposing methods and properties using object-oriented syntax. And we make it just as easy to access COBOL from Java with either object-oriented COBOL code or by using our utility tools to generate Java bridge code, we make the COBOL code accessible to your Java programmers. COBOL is a fairly easy language to learn to read for your Java programmers. Our IDE is based on Eclipse, which is commonly used by Java programmers. And IsCobol contains a lot of tools and products that bridge the two languages, like the service bridge that generates bridge programs that we're gonna look at, and the easy linkage feature that generates Java code for the Java developer to access the COBOL data. Our software development kit, also known as development system, includes the COBOL compiler, which compiles Java uh, COBOL code in that two-step process that I talked about. It includes a full service graphical debugger, and this I, and an IDE based on Eclipse. And of course, we have a runtime consisting of a framework of Java jar libraries that are needed when running your programs in Java. Also included in the runtime is an application server to run in a client server distributed environment, giving you file stability and performance by using this multi-threaded processing. The EIS is a group of products for web enablement. This includes both consuming and producing REST and SOAP web services, using a bridge generator to create a servlet, and even running your application from a browser window without changing any of your code. We're gonna look at all that. The database bridge, called the EasyDB, generates a bridge program to convert your COBOL standard file IO statements to SQL statements, so you can access any relational database without changing your code. Is COBOL UDBC is a JDBC ODBC solution giving a relational database access to your COBOL JI SAM data files. ESQL, also known as embedded SQL support, is built into the Is COBOL compiler. It's included with it. Speaking of COBOL data files, we have two native ISAM file systems to choose from. JI SAM is your basic ISAM flat file. It still has a lot of great features like security. Or CTree RTG. It's an advanced ISAM data format with its own server. It's a relational database-like environment that can be expanded to give SQL access to your data and easily implement, implement real-time replication backups. The load balancer is useful for very large user environments. It distributes multiple client connections to different servers. 
We are the only COBOL that provides a standard solution for Android mobile devices. Now, altogether, um, these products give you multiple options to keep and modernize your COBOL. You can generate SOAP and REST for easy SOA. You can develop your GUI using the complete list of controls in an industry standard IDE using COBOL code, or you can develop your GUI in another language like Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, whatever. Create powerful reports with our IDE's automatic report generator. And you have Java integration, of course. But also, because with this COBOL, you can call a CDLL or a shared library from the Java interface. Our customers might say our finest product is our technical support team. Most of Variance technicians company 10 or more years. We have technical support in multiple time zones. And our goal is to try to answer it. As a matter of fact, we try to answer any question we get within two hours. Our support technicians are in close contact with our developers, which has made us really responsive to bugs and enhancements. And that gives us the ability to give each of our customers the personal touch. So let's get to the demo. We're going to time warp from 1960 to 2020. I'm going to use the IDE. And I'm going to take a moment here to check and make sure everyone is OK. Looks like we're still good. OK, so this is the IDEs. If you're familiar with Eclipse, it probably looks pretty familiar to you. Um, we're going to talk about this more in another webinar, the next one, as a matter of fact. But one of the ways to modernize your COBOL is to use an IDE. Our IDE can interface with most code versioning systems, and it'll help you develop a consistent development environment for designing, coding, testing, and debugging your projects. It's a familiar workplace for new programmers, and last I checked, there were over 40 million add-ons for Eclipse. They can all be used in our IsCobol IDE. Now, of course, you can still use your current editor, or you can work from the command line and use scripts for your builds. Uh, let's just take a moment. Who has used Eclipse or the IsCobol IDE before? Would you raise your hand if you have? To make sure that you can see my oh my screen is paused I'm I'm so sorry okay can you you should be able to see my IDE now all right so attendees has anybody used Eclipse or worked with Eclipse before just raise your hand I see a couple hi Clay yes Clay definitely uses the IDE ah uh, Jamal good excellent okay well. Well, the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to look at our modernization samples. These are installed when you install is COBOL. And there are several of them. I'm just going to look at four. We'll start with the, the starting point, the character screen that we modernized. And I'll bring it up in our, uh, in our code editor. You can see it's pretty standard. It's got a uh, character screen. And it's got a lookup screen with some function keys. And we're just displaying a simple window. And then what this program does is it performs various uh, file I.O. on a customer file and returns it, uh, displays it on the screen. So I'm going to build this. And normally, remember the steps. It's COBOL to Java code, Java to Java class. And then the compiler goes back and deletes the, Java, the interim Java code to make it transparent. I've set some flags here so that when I build this project, uh, it will keep the Java and not delete it because I want to show it to you. So it's here in the output. And here's the Java, the interim stage that was created. And you can see, if you know Java, it's written cleanly. It's pretty straightforward. This middle step, though, it, it enables you to pass to the Java compiler some Java options. You can do things like optimization. But you still work in a COBOL environment. The Java is transparent. So now I'm going to run this program.
And you can see it's a pretty typical uh, character program with a lookup screen. Okay. And I'm going to leave it running. And then our modernization series of the samples, they go through different stages. What to do if you just want to do the minimum amount of work and get a, a graphical screen. And then it increases and, and adds to that until we get to the IDE screen GUI. And in this one, we have created the screen section and just copied it in. And we created it here with the screen painter. Uh, open this up. I'm sorry, everything runs slowly when you're on a go-to meeting. So, and this is the screen. And these are all of our uh, ID. These are all of our uh, GUI controls. And of course, because it's Java, you can also use a Java Bean, which opens up a whole new set of controls. Here you see we have some entry fields. We have added uh, push buttons with icons on a toolbar, and we have a uh, status bar down here. Okay, and then we generated it and put it into this code. And so now I'm going to run this. Do, do, do. Go back to file, and we need to, of course, build. And when we have in our output, we will run it. Okay, so here is the updated graphical uh, application that was built from this GUI screen. Okay, so far so good. So I'll close this and we don't need the character anymore because I want to show you there's one more step to updating this screen. Uh, we introduced a lot of new properties that made the screens look better and look more modern and up to date as uh, Microsoft and Google, for instance, changed their, uh, their, their look. We allowed you to change your look, but you would have to change your code. So we came up with this feature called Code in Injection, and that's new this year, this uh, 2020 R1. And instead of changing your code, because we have this middle step, we can add properties to the windows and to the labels and, and all of the, the controls, the GUI controls, from a, an outside source. So we have a properties file. And for instance, on all the windows, we're making all of the windows gradient by adding color. We're changing the look of all of the controls here, the toolbar, the push buttons, and the entry fields. And what the compiler is going to do is it's going to take the COBOL code and it's going to take this addition here. And when it creates the Java intermediate code, it'll put these into the, the code. So I'm going to build this. Everyone still with me? Shane, are you back? Can you see me? Okay. And then when we run the program, I've got some more uh, update uh, properties here so that we can change the color and the behavior of the entry fields. When, and I'll show you that. And I've added LM Zoom because I think it's pretty cool. That changes the font and the size of the controls as you change the screen size. And uh, just to change the icon here, I just I threw this icon in. I wanted to show you in the in the past you had to use W dollar bitmap to load your icon before you could display it. Now you just you put this in your properties file and you have a new icon. So let's run this program. And there is that new screen. Now remember I haven't changed one one line of code. But now I have a completely different looking push buttons up here. I have some mouse over events on my uh, entry field. You can see it's lighter up here in the top left corner than it is in the bottom right. It's very subtle, but it does make a difference. Okay, so this is our new GUI screen. We have this icon and we have this LM zoom here. Isn't that 
Isn't that neat? It's like the layout manager. If you're familiar with the layout manager, but you don't have to apply it to each control. You just apply it to the whole screen. Okay. All right. So you've got a great GUI, uh, a GUI screen. Now you want to deploy it. Well, we, we of course have the distributed de deployment where you have a thin client installation on your clients and you have uh, everything running on the server. But sometimes you have a tablet or you have something where you cannot install the thin client. And to, to display it then, you can we've made it so you can display that application in the browser window. So I'm gonna show you that next. And for my server, I'm going to use, whoops, it closed, hang on. I'm going to use an AWS uh, computer, and it's in Northern California, and it's a Linux Red Hat. Here it's running, and I'll get the address here. And what I want to do, I've already installed my uh, my programs. Well, they're they're installed because they're samples, and compiled them and got them uh, set up. So I'm going to connect here. Uh, the, and EC2 user at, and then and there's my address. Okay, and I'll go into my iscobol installation in the bin folder. And I'm going to start the server because that's what's going to run my program. And then I'm going to start the web client. And that's going to act as a client piece when the browser window talks to it. Okay, so we'll go back to our browser and I'm going to open up uh, Chrome for this. And we we'll use the address and I started the web client on 8080 and I've already defined in the web client uh, the application called it GUI. And Remember, I'm completely within the browser, and you can see here is our application. Looks just like it was running on our desktop. But this means that you don't need anything on the client installed from is COBOL. All you need is a browser. Anywhere a browser runs, you can run your application. Here's the lookup window. Looks exactly the same. This is all the same code. Okay. Now. Because it's the web client, you have a lot more control. I know that some of you use the application uh, survey, the application server uh, panel, but the web client has even more control. So let's connect to that web client console. And save it. And I'm going to manage. And remember, I typed GUI at the end of the, my address over here. So this is GUI, and here's my connection. And I'll show the session. You can see quite a bit about it. But I can also, and this is a great feature for uh, customer service or technical support, I can view the user screen. And I can control it. So I can say, well, you need to click on exit to exit. Well, there they go. OK, so you can see it. it is connected. All right. Um, it, it says your session's being viewed down here so that they know what's happening. You can record the session and you can set it up to automatically record. It's a lot of options. But what's really cool, what I really want to show you now is, yes, we have a graphical screen showing, but remember our original character screen? You can also run character screens in the browser. So there is our screen and it behaves the same way. So you can update one or two screens and keep the old screens, intermix them, and still have them display in a browser. Okay. So I'm pretty excited. I hope you all are too. Let's go to the next step because, yes, this is great, but it still looks like a desktop application running inside of a browser. So we're going to shut this down. And. I'm going to shut that down, and we'll go back to our our IDE. I'm going to close up some of these, clean up a little bit. Are you all still with me? Raise your hand if you're still with me. Hmm. 
Nobody's raising their hand. You can still hear me? Okay. All right. Oh, there's some hands. Very good. Thank you, Michael. All right. So now we're going to move the COBOL code into the background and give it a new front end. And in, in our sample case, it's JavaScript. We have some JavaScript here. What we've done with our COBOL code is we've gotten rid of the screen section and created a linkage section. And I'll explain this, these ELK directives in a minute. The linkage section is all the data that the COBOL code needs to do its job and all the data that it needs to send out to answer the questions. So we have a customer code, we have a, a place to put a customer record in, we have one to put a customer record out, uh, we have the request status, and we have a, a, a structure for the lookup, okay, a table. In the code itself, we've kept the file IO paragraphs and we've made them all entry points. So this code is the same as it was in the COBOL uh, program, and this is an entry point, okay? And we have one for each one of these. Now, we have our linkage section, but we need to tell the compiler each field, is it an input or an output? And so that's where these ELK directives come in. This is an input, and when your Java or whoever JavaScript, your programmer is sending data, it doesn't want to call it LK cus code, so we've renamed it code. But I didn't type these in by hand. There is a service editor, I'm going to bring that up, and it will define uh, either REST or SOAP, mine's a REST, and here's all my entry points. And I'm going to look right now at delete and look at the data map. And you can see on the customer code we have input. Okay, so what it's saying is we can't delete anything unless we know what the customer code is. I'm going to make it mandatory and click on mandatory there. I'm going to say, okay, save everything. And you'll notice when I go back to my code, now I have mandatory. It gets added to your code. You don't have to type this in. The only other pieces that I want to point out here are the service bridge uh, setting which is gonna tell the compiler to, to do something special. It's gonna create brand new COBOL code as a bridge between the J, whoever is gonna read your JSON and the REST service. And I'm telling it it's a REST and not a SOAP. Okay, so I'm gonna build this project. And you can see that these REST programs have been created. Let's take a look at one of them. I'll look at first. This is COBOL code. It may be uh, look a little extensive to you. It is some object-oriented COBOL code in here. That's why we're generating it for you. But basically, it gets the request. It changes the data that it gets in the request to COBOL data. It calls the COBOL program. When the COBOL program returns, it takes the data that came back in the linkage section and puts it into a JSON structure, and it returns that JSON structure. And that's all this program does, each one of these programs for each one of the entry points. So let's run this. Um, so, it, it, oh, oh, I want to tell you about running it. When I run it, I want to test this, okay? Normally, it's a service. You would run it in a container, uh, um, an application server like uh, um, Tomcat or JBoss. We have, we have customers who are using both Tomcat, JBoss, Glassfish, uh, some others. As a matter of fact, if anybody's using uh, uh, an application server like Tomcat now, would you put into the chat what you're using? I'd like to know if we have any other different ones out there. And while you're doing that, the IDE comes with a J2EE application server embedded in it so that we can test. So in order to test, all I need to do is right click and say, run this as an EIS servlet. 
And you'll see down here, this is my server running. It's, it's listening now, okay? And here is this HTML, is this JavaScript page. And so I'm gonna click on first, and when I do, it's gonna call the service, give it the information that I want the first record. It'll send back that information, and the, J, the JavaScript will, will display it. Now what is sent back, I'll show you that. I did first, so we'll do first. This is what was sent back. So your JavaScript or, or whatever programmers are gonna know what to do with this data. They're gonna say, oh, I can, I can work with this. Okay, and you, you're still keeping your COBOL logic active in the background. Okay, so I wanna stop this service. We're gonna run it in debug and it's gonna use our external debugger. So we'll debug as an EIS servlet. Here it is running again. We don't see that, well, this is the, uh, the, the debugger, it's, it's listening. Okay, connection refused because we don't have a COBOL program running yet. I'm gonna click on the, the first again. And at that point, it's going to call rest first.cbl. So here we are in the debugger. And you can see I've got um, my rest first. And I'll just step through it. It moves the data into the fields so that uh, the COBOL can understand. And now it's going to call the COBOL program. Okay, so now it's calling it. And we should be in the first. Yeah, we are. First entry point. And I'm just going to step through here. You, you know what a COBOL program looks like. All right. And get out of there. And we're all set. Now it's going to go back. And it sends this data back to the, the program. So for instance, under first name, you see it's buried LLC. Right? And then rest first is going to move that to JSON. And it's going to send it back and go back to listening. And if we go back to our screen, you can see we now have the first record, okay? So now we know that this works. You've seen some of the benefits of using the IDE. You could, of course, put it into your test environment and test it, uh, but you would need to make a WAR file. And now I'm ready to deploy, so I'm going to make a WAR file. Let's exit the debugger. And you, making that WAR file is as easy as right-clicking and exporting to a WAR file. I choose, this is my project. I'm gonna have all of my classes. And I remember where I put it, because we're gonna point to it later. All right, so that's created. Now I'm going to deploy this uh, in Germany on an AWS. So here we have Frankfurt. And I'm going to do it inside of a Docker. Uh, this Docker container is running on a Linux Red Hat. I'll copy this to the clipboard. And we will go to AW and EC2 user add. And there's my address. And you can see that uh, I have a couple of Docker images here. And I, I made a container from the variant D image. So I'm gonna start it now. Uh, start variant run, I called it. All right, and then if we look at what's running on that, you can see that Catalina is running. That's my Tomcat. And I started it on, uh, 8888. So we're going to go back to our browser. This time I'll use Chrome. And there's our address, 8888. And here's Tomcat. I'll log in. And we'll go down here and choose the file. This is why we have to remember where we put the file. And here it is, customer.war. Deploy it. It's uploading. 
Now I have the free AWS, which is very small, so it takes a little bit longer to upload. But there it is. I'll run my customer. There I am. I'm deployed. There's my list. Again, we're looking at um, JavaScript, but we're running COBOL in the background. Now I see we have someone using Tomcat. That's great. Uh, you know, Tomcat's simple and it works. I really like it. Okay, so I deployed the run the war file very easily. You saw the power of the IDE. I showed you it deployed. It's the same application. Uh, we can also go here and do uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do the lookup. You can see the JSON that's returned when a lookup command is sent. Okay. So I went through this pretty fast. If you want to see this in more detail, check out our YouTube channel. I'm trying to get more people to subscribe. Lots of people go and they view the things, but they don't subscribe. If we get enough people subscribing, I can get our variant name in there. So I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm going to go into the chat. Give me a moment. Where'd the chat go? Maybe I'm not. Oh, there it is. And I'm gonna paste that YouTube in there. Um, a lot of the videos, uh, you'll find a, a very familiar face. That will be me. <laughs> I do a lot of these. Um, Edwin has also done quite a few. So just a second. And send to all. So I just sent out the uh, YouTube video, uh, our, our YouTube variant channel so please go there all right so that's it for the demo let me go back to the slides and um, tell you about what's coming up so we have a webinars coming up in two different paths if you're on the mainframe for the mainframe listeners the next the next week is june 10th we're going to be talking about rehosting, moving, doing a deep dive into the choices that you have and the solutions that are available to you for rehosting. And then on July 1st, we're going to give you a preview of our upcoming uh, Is COBOL for the ZOS. We have a solution for that that is coming up. It's in, uh, it's in beta. Uh, we're working on it in several sites, so you'll be able to see that. If you are already on Open Systems, Linux, Unix, Windows, Mac, on June 17th, we're gonna have a discussion about the areas and the ways that you can modernize and revitalize your COBOL environment. And I'm gonna have a lot of screenshots from our customers showing their graphical screens, what they've done, uh, showing some before and after that I have. If you have some graphical screens that you'd like to share with ev everyone, I would love it if you would just send them to me. Okay, and we'll look at as many as I have. Um, I have some now from Brazil, I have some from the Netherlands, and some from here in the United States. You'll be able to look at all those and we'll talk about them. And then on June 24th, we have a, a guest speaker. I'm really excited about it. Matthew Burke um, is, uh, is the CTO of Collection Partner. And they took their old application and they decided they needed to make this mo as modern as they can. And they did what I just did in the demo for their whole application. They moved it to back to the background for REST services. They're using uh, React, J, uh, JavaScript. Yeah, uh, sorry, React, JavaScript. And he's going to show you his application and talk about what were some of the challenges and what were some of the unknown benefits and, and just in general, what he thought about his move from the old to this REST service. So if you're interested in the REST service, you'll be able to ask him whatever questions you would like. On July 8th, we're gonna round the whole series off by having Massimo, and I think a lot of you know, oh, I'm sorry, I forget that when it changes. Okay, here we go. Can you see my screen? I hope you can. Okay. We're going to look at, we're gonna, 
hear from Massimo, and he's going to talk about some advanced features, some some things you can do with APIs, some of the the deep down unknown things about is COBOL uh, and how that can help you modernize. So I'm I hope that you join us there. I am also going to be redoing this whole thing uh, probably tomorrow. We haven't said it, but you will get an invitation because you signed up for the series. So you're going to and you will also see uh, a link to this particular webinar. All right, so do we have any questions? Marlene, can you hear me? Yes, there is Bernard. Yeah. Hi, Bernard. <laughs> Hi. Uh, well, it's very hectic <laughs> with all this problem at the start. Uh -huh. Yes, we have a few questions. Yeah. So uh, the first question is character application without a screen section in the browser. Oh, you mean that your screen is defined within your program and not in the screen section? That's perfectly fine. That works as well. OK. Uh, the, next, the next question is about there is an intermediate Java mm -hmm. generated by the compiler. Is this code maintainable? Oh, well, and that's a hard answer. It's, it is not really maintainable. Remember, this is a transparent code. We don't advise you that we don't advise that you would take this Java code and, and change it and, and maintain it. Um, it's better to do the work outside and you can call this Java code. You can interact with it, but write your own Java. That way you can maintain your Java and not possibly break the Java that was created when the COBOL code was compiled. Oh, wait a question is coming. Mm -hmm. Let me read. Oh, that's also a question about Java. Mm -hmm. If this it, is a Java class, uh -huh. why do we need the iscobol runtime to execute it? The Java class uses jar files that are proprietary to iscobol to variant. So you'll need that to run the Java. Just as you would if you had used uh, you know, a, a Java bean or some other Java uh, commercial product. Yes, I'm looking at other question. Uh, well, we are still uh, out of the time, but <laughs> a lot at, out of the time. But we have, for we the have, 45 yeah. uh, session, uh, no, I don't see any immediate question. Any, oh yeah, that was a question. Do you know at what time we will schedule for tomorrow the re replay? Not the replay, the re um, I I don't know, but I think we should do it early. So okay. uh, an hour. I, I, I'm, I intend, and maybe Bernard, you can you can okay this for you. I want to do it an hour earlier than we had intended to start. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll inform the people, but people yeah. are. Uh, I'll all send over, a new well, invitation. Out. Yeah, yeah. You, we are very sorry, and I look at the participants. Uh, they come from a lot of different places, and uh, well, this is really not coming from us. I think you have understood it. It happened. And even uh, GoToWebinar told us that they had the same problem, apparently, or similar problem with yeah. another customer. So we will do it. And in any case, everybody will get the, the recording so that you can come back to the, to the, the thread and uh, not be too much, uh, uh, not have too many problems by, by this. These ones. Right. So. Uh, let me, uh, before everyone leaves in the handout section, let me put the uh, PDF version of the slides. Uh, there we go. Okay. So if you want a copy of the slides, they are in the handout section. Um, I really wanted to uh, give you a, if you'll hang on just a second, I think I can find this. Um, <laughs> We have a success story available, and I'm going to put that out there for the uh, speaker that's going to be on there uh, with us on the 24th, Matthew. So it is 
right here. Okay, I'm putting it into the handouts. There you go. And it's there. Okay, so download those handouts if you'd like. And uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to, to let us know. There's some information on the screen, or you can send it to marketing you, uh, where, where you got this, or you can send it directly to uh, to me if you want, Marilyn.Prince at Variant, or to Bernard, Bernard.Zizzerman um, at Variant.com. Many of you already have those emails. And uh, that's it. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, kudos to you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye to everyone.